Hi everybody. What we're going to cover in this video is how to create a custom cursor, not just a custom cursor that just replaces your mouse and just follows your mouse exactly as it is, but something that also tracks your mouse with some really nice easing and transitions as a result of it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to cover a lot of cool ground, both in the world of CSS, but also in the world of JavaScript. So buckle up, let's get started. So I'm going to have a few slides here to kind of get the stage of what we're doing. So first of all, if all you want is a custom cursor, that's an image, you don't really care about anything beyond it, you have a very easy way of doing that using nothing but CSS. You have the cursor property, which takes a value of URL, and you can specify a path to any image that you might have. Could be a PNG, could be a GIF, could be an SVG, and you can even specify the offsets so you can make sure that whatever character is replacing your mouse is adjusted positionally from where your cursor would be and where the center point needs to be. So you have a lot of fairly good control on that. But the problem with the CSS approach is this. We can only have static image. You really can't have animations. You can't do some of the more advanced things you can do typically in the browser. And you also can't have a situation where you see a custom visual and you can see your custom cursor and your default cursor at the same time, which can be a familiarity or even an accessibility issue because our default mouse cursors have a lot of states to them. By default, we just see the, the pointer and there's all these things. But the reality is that it actually does a whole lot more. It goes well beyond just the pointer. It also has the you know the resize, the caret, the 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 link that shows up when you're hovering over a hyperlink. All of these things are special cases. And if you replace it with a cursor that is your own, unless you create one for every state, you might create this weird familiarity issue where basic expectation of what your users might have aren't fully there. So you know by going with the CSS approach is an all or nothing sort of deal. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Instead, I prefer an approach that is a JavaScript enhanced approach where we take our custom cursor and specify it as just a blob of HTML. It could be an image, it could be a div with many elements in it. It could be as elaborate or as simple as you want, but the control and flexibility you have is entirely your own. So you have a lot of flexibility here and we'll be using JavaScript to position the cursor to the location of our mouse, which gives us added capabilities, which we will look at in a few moments. So what is involved in this approach? There are really three things. First is an HTML element that will act as our custom mouse cursor. And to emphasize a point I made earlier, this element can be simple, can be complex, entirely up to you. A mouse move event handler that provides the current mouse cursor coordinates. And lastly, a request animation frame based animation loop that updates the position of our custom mouse cursor. This is an optional part, but it's actually a good practice to use. And we'll talk about why that is the case and how we're gonna approach it as part of our implementation, especially when we create the situation where the mouse cursor, the custom mouse cursor follows or lags the, the actual mouse position by a small amount to create that little follow mouse cursor effect. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into code. So I'm gonna go into VS Code, which is my code editor of choice, probably code of choice for you as well. I have a blank HTML document. So I'm going to create the basic starting point. Let me zoom in heavily so you can see everything here. So I'm just gonna call this custom mouse cursor. And let me refresh this page. And you can now see custom mouse cursor being displayed here as well. Let me zoom in a bit. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is specify the HTML element that will act as our custom mouse cursor. And so for this, we have many options here, but I'm gonna use a div. I say div ID equals custom cursor. And what its content is gonna be, it's gonna be an image. Image source equals, and I'm gonna use Twitter's Twimoji image or emoji set. And so I'm gonna have this be HTTPS, let's group.com slash icon slash 1f419.svg. Not the most you know friendliest of names here, but you know, bear with me, it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, and you can now see that our custom cursor is now displayed. It's a little bit on a large side. It's an SVG, so it's taking up all available space. Let's go ahead and fix that by providing a little bit of style. I'm gonna add cat custom cursor, and this said width equals 50 pixels. And that should be a good starting point for our little octopus here. Let me zoom in by about 200, 200%. 200% seems fine, and have this going. All right, so our custom element, or our custom cursor is gonna be following around our page is this one. It's going to be this div element with the value of custom cursor, whose image value is this octopus that ultimately ends up appearing. So what we want to do 
is that as I'm moving the mouse cursor around, I wanna first have the, the custom cursor track my mouse position perfectly with no lag. And for all of this, we're gonna use some JavaScript. The first thing I wanna do is add an event listener for dealing with the mouse moving on the screen. So document that add event listener, mouse move, and I'm gonna call the event handler set mouse position and event bubbling, don't really care about that right now. So function set mouse position event, and here is where we can specify the code that will run as our mouse is currently moving. And so let me just first just make sure console.log mouse moving. I always like to do this, especially when starting out, because you never know where some issue with the page might be coming up that is causing some problems. All right, mouse moving, everything seems to be working just fine. Okay, cool. And so let's go ahead and take that console.log statement out. And so what I wanna do is store the X and Y position of our mouse cursor as it is on our page. So I'm gonna get two values, let mouse X equals zero, let mouse Y equals zero. And these two variables will eventually represent the horizontal and vertical mouse positions respectively. All right, so inside set mouse position, I'm gonna set mouse X equals event dot client X. The client x property on our event argument gets the x position of our mouse cursor as it is on the page. And then mouse y equals event dot client y. All right, and so with this, we have the x and y positions set. And we can see that working by if I just do the console.log, let me actually use the this syntax, mouse x and mouse y and uh, yes, I made a mistake here. I forgot the dollar sign. You see, you're seeing me code live, so it's, you're gonna see, expect to see errors like this. Okay, everything seems to be going well. I can see the log statement of what's going on right here. All right, and so what we wanna do is have the position of the mouse be specified and set directly on our mouse element or on our element itself. Now there's several ways of doing this. I can easily specify the position directly as part of the mouse move event itself. One of the things we talked about in a different article in video is that mouse move is considered to be a chatty event. It moves very, very rapidly. It fires very frequently, far more than the time we might need, especially if we're making a visual update. In our case, our visual update is gonna be pegged by the frame rate, request animation frame speed at running, which is usually 60 frames a second on the monitor I'm in right now. My MacBook Pro has a 120 hertz screen, so it goes up to 120 times a second. There's a lot of variation in terms of how fast it runs, but we don't want to force an update do unnecessary work by having a visual update tied to a chatty event like mouse move. One approach for being able to do this is by actually having a request animation frame loop that acts as the orchestrator of all the visual updates. So it doesn't matter how quickly mouse X and mouse Y update, the speed with which our visual updates are triggered will be controlled entirely by request animation frame. So I'm gonna create a function called here. I'm gonna call this move cursor, move cursor, and we can give it a timestamp argument, which is optional, but nice to have. And inside of it, I'm gonna do request animation frame and call move cursor again. And of course we need to trigger this, so move cursor is the initial trigger call to it. Now you could call it this way or you could call it via request animation frame. For our purposes, it doesn't really matter, but it's a good practice to make sure that you're always calling a request animation frame event or a function, callback function by a request animation frame itself. And so what I wanna do here is that now that we have this, I wanna be able to specify the position of our cursor very nicely. And so to do this, there's gonna be a custom property that I'm gonna specify in CSS that will then update in JavaScript and the value of that property will be going to a transform function that specifies the horizontal and vertical position. There's a lot of stuff to connect kind of wrap your heads around. So let me explain what's going on here. So I'm gonna get cursor X position, value of zero, cursor Y position, value of zero again. And then I'm gonna transform transform, translate 3D. You don't have to use 3D, but why not? var slash slash cursor x position and var slash slash cursor y position and value of zero. So I'm essentially setting the horizontal 
and vertical values of my translate 3D function to be tied to the custom properties, cursor x pos and cursor y pos, and then the value for z, z, z the z part, part, part of translate 3D will be zero. Okay, great. And so if I refresh the page, again, nothing should be happening. So what I wanna do here though, is specify, update the value of cursor x pos and cursor y pos with the value of our mouse x and mouse y properties that we have uh, requested a value from. So I'm gonna first get a, a pointer to our DOM element. So let custom cursor equals document dot query selector, and it'll be custom cursor. That's the ID value of our HTML element. And let me just place it towards the right here, just so we have a, a reasonably neat arrangement of our content. And so once I have this, I'm going to then do custom cursor dot set dot style dot set property and I'm going to specify dash dash cursor x pos to be mouse x plus the pixel value and similarly I'm going to copy this value and paste it here and do cursor y pos mouse y plus the pixel value so essentially as we are moving our mouse cursor on the screen request animation frame loop is going to be updating the value of cursor x pos and cursor y pos with this value right here. Let me refresh this page. And once I've done that, notice what you see here. You can now see the octopus is following my mouse cursor very nicely without any kind of a, a lag. One thing that I've noticed though is that the position of the octopus is towards the bottom right corner of the mouse cursor. We may not want that. We may want it to be more centered. So one way of doing that is we have an HTML element fully in our control. So let's, let me set the position of this to fixed. And let me set my top value of our octopus to be minus 25 pixels and left value to be minus 25 pixels. And I'm doing that because in this case, I kind of have an idea that the width of it is 50 pixels and it's approximately a square shaped item. So if I refresh this page now, notice how the octopus is actually following my mouse cursor very, very nicely. Now, earlier I talked about, you may want the situation where you don't want to see the custom, you don't want to see the mouse cursor and a custom mouse cursor. If you are in the situation, just do cursor none on the body element in this case and refresh the page, you'll now see that the only mouse cursor you see is that of our custom mouse cursor we specified in our HTML. And like for reasons I mentioned earlier, I'm not a huge fan of this because the mouse cursor does provide a lot of value, especially in giving feedback on various interactions you can perform. So not having that gets a little bit awkward. So I'm going to go and remove this, but at least you know that if you need it though, you have that luxury of being able to do that. And so the last thing I want to do is right now we have our octopus tracking our mouse very nicely, but what if I want to have that slight lag where it kind of following the mouse cursor, with a slight delay. So it's almost like it's just slowly shifting and flo almost floating to the new position of the mouse cursor. There's several ways of doing this. One way is by actually doing more things in JavaScript where I specify the delta between the horizontal and vertical positions and slowly e ease my way into the right value. Not the bad, we're not a bad way to do it, but we actually in this case have a much nicer, easier solution. We're already in CSS. We're already specifying the position in CSS where where the value needs to go. We can actually specify a transition that simply adds a delay between where I am right now and where I need to go. So to add that the mouse tracking, the lagging capability, all I'm gonna do here is add a transition. It's gonna to apply to a transform property. It'll run for about, let's say two seconds. And I'm gonna give it a cubic Bezier ease timing function. Uh, one of these pre-defaults, you know, uh, with this value being greater than one, it means it's gonna bounce back a little bit. Let me refresh the page here. And notice that once I've done that, you can now see the octopus follows my mouse cursor, but it also has a slight snapback based on the custom easing function. Now again, everything of this could be done entirely in JavaScript, but by it being in CSS, I have a little bit of luxury on being able to customize the value a bit so that it behaves a little bit differently than what I would want without having to write out of code. So here you can see like it's much faster, which a much larger overshoot, which is kind of cool. And so that's one very easy way for being able to have a mouse cursor that not only follows our actual cursor very closely, but can also have a slight trend, like delay and a lag that makes it look like it's actually following it with a slight delay, which is also equally cool. So with that, we kind of covered the 
the broad basics of how to add a custom cursor using our own HTML content, how to style it with CSS appropriately so it is centered where we want it to be, and also a way of adding that nice lag and delay effect entirely using a transition without having to go too far into JavaScript. And we looked at how we can optimize for various screen refresh rates by delegating a lot of the heavy lifting on updating a visual property to request animation frame timer loop, but then having the actual animation itself be handled in CSS by transition, where we're dealing with time values as opposed to frame values, which means there's no extra work we need to do to normalize their animation speed across fast devices and slow devices and high powered screens and so on. And in future videos, I'll go a little deeper and explain more of how I created the mouse follow effect that you can see on the crypto.com website, where you have a little bit more details where the, and there's an animation to the custom mouse cursor, it disappears after a while. And you can also persist the state of whether you want to see a custom cursor or not. Some people may not like it. And so all these things are ideas that I will show you how to build, but the foundational pieces are what we saw here, which should take you a very far in getting your custom mouse cursor objectives accomplished. If you have a question, please post in the forums at forum.crypto.com where I and others will be very happy to help you out. Subscribe to my newsletter where I talk about a bunch of topics that are really at the intersection of design, technology, and also business and career. So if you are into web development, if you're interested in areas around it, my newsletter will be a great location for it. Lastly, follow me on Twitter where I post a stream of updates on things I'm working on, things I find useful that you might find useful as a web developer, and a variety of things in between. And lastly, if you like my style of explaining things and how I present information, you will definitely like my books. I have a bunch of books that I've written on a variety of different topics available in paperback and Kindle editions. My new book, the new edition of it at least, called JavaScript Apps and Beginner's Guide should be out right now. So check, check a, a link in the bottom, check it out, it makes a great gift or a good paperweight if you have a need for a paperweight. And with that, I'll see you all next time.